Jill, I don't understand. Why are you so shy? Why are you so quiet? Why don't you get out of your shell? Stop, you're way too loud. You're always talking. You're so overbearing. I can't, I never can get a word in. And so these are some of the negative terms that are associated with both of our personalities, but luckily they don't define who we are. So with introversion and extroversion, you kind of think of how it defines your personality, when it actually is how you get your energy. So for an introvert, there is this stigma where you kind of want to be self-reflecting, and you kind of want to sit back and maybe go home and read a book after a long day of work. While for an extrovert, you could go and read a book, but you would rather go be with your friends and kind of get out and be the life of the party. And so there are definitely strengths for both of our personalities. Um, introverts are thinkers, they're analyzers, they're listeners, they like to bring things down and really pay attention to those details, um, making sure our work is thorough before we send it off. And as for an extrovert, we kind of tend to word vomit to the audience. <laughs> and there's always this kind of jumping in to a plan and always wanting to achieve things and making those goals. And tomorrow I'm going to do this, and tomorrow I'm going to do that. And it's kind of like someone needs to take you back and be like, Steph, you can't build a treehouse for Honors Project. You really need to think of something else. <laughs> so there's also this little gray area. This is called an ambivert. So this, kind of, this person kind of gets their energy from two different ways. They could go out with a great group of friends. They could go out and meet new people but they would rather have that close group, that kind of small knit, where they know who they're talking to and they know and they feel comfortable. There's this very large range of introversion and extroversion. Now, to be honest, if you were a complete introvert or an extrovert, you would honestly be in an insane asylum. Not kidding. <laughs> and there is a way to kind of look at the scale and be able to find where you belong. So, yeah, so what's your why are we mentioning any of this to you guys today? So it took 19 years before someone told us what our personalities really mean and that we weren't, you know, the negative terms we talked about earlier. If we implemented a program that taught kids from a younger age about themselves and what these personalities actually mean, imagine how much better our social interactions throughout life would be. Um, these concepts are so simple, but they're also vital to our everyday interactions. So, we made a three-step uh, program that we could try and implement. Step one, identifying who we are. And this could be in some corner of, have you ever heard of the Myers-Briggs test? So this is where you can get a real good idea of how you learn, how you act, and where you fit in kind of like the mold of introversion or extroversion. And then step two, accepting who we are and the strengths and weaknesses that come with it. And then finally, strengthening those weaknesses. So we didn't want to leave you guys like struggling with weakness, good luck. We kind of gave you um, some steps you could take as an introvert or an extrovert to start um, strengthening those weaknesses. So taking small doable steps, preparing, practicing, and taking time to recharge before and after is something an introvert can do to kind of strengthen their weakness. So one weakness are, that I kind of have is public speaking. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> before I came out here and talked to you guys, I had to give my talk in front of the mirror, in front of my parents, in front of my friends, in front of my class, so that I would feel comfortable coming out here and talking to you. For an introvert, it's really about taking these small steps that you feel are doable and gain your confidence little by little, so that once you're out here, you feel com like comfortable. <laughs> and as for an extrovert, we're kind of the social norm. So you have to kind of take a step back and for me, you have to reflect and understand that there's this person who has these great ideas but they don't really feel comfortable speaking about them. So sometimes it's good to reflect and understand that, hey, what do you think? What is your ideas? And ask them personally, oh, this is what they want. They can actually prompt them to say something. It's always hard to kind of find that dynamic between being an extrovert and understanding that there are other people around you and you're not just this great old big character in this grand fantasy novel and you get to go and do whatever you want and everything. So, <laughs> you know, ad lib it, see how it goes, it's fine, but yeah. So the big takeaway 
There is nothing you can't do. If you're an introvert and you want to public speak, like, you can do it. If you're an extrovert and you want to have a meal by yourself, you can do that too. If you're any of the three personalities and you want to take on leadership positions, you can definitely do that too. It's just about being comfortable um, in your everyday social uh, situations and taking those steps to do it. Yeah. And to understand that you can look in the mirror and be okay with being introvert or being an ambivert or being extrovert. You can fall anywhere on the spectrum and understand that this is who you are and it doesn't matter if you are being told to do one or another. To find what is comfortable with you is most important. So I encourage you all to get out there and be that introvert and extrovert and even ambivert that you are.